Hello, uh, my name is Tony Mills and I'm one of the lead artists that is part of the uh, Magnetic North bid for the CEC fund uh, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the uh, the show, the project that I'm hoping to work on as part of the funding bid. So the show is called The Cave and it is a solo physical theatre piece. It is, um, it's got a sort of parallel to Plato's allegory of the cave but it is an original idea and um, it carries with it an environmental uh, message and kind of ask the question is it better to know or to not know it is essentially about how um, accepting the responsibility of creating your own reality taking responsibility for the for the for the outcomes so the piece follows the journey of a creature now this creature lives uh, in a cave deep down underground in a dark recess away from the rest of the world how it got there we don't know but it's there Okay, this creature lives behind a den of broken mirrors and it has this kind of daily routine and it comes out and explores its limited environment. It doesn't have any senses though. It doesn't have a nose, eyes, ears or mouth, but it can kind of feel its way around. Okay, it's, it's limited environment. Somehow though, through the power of theatre, flowers grow deep down in this dark, wet, moist cave. And the creature has developed this kind of habit whereby every, now every time when it does its little routine, it stumbles upon these flowers and it just grabs it and just breaks it up, just, you know, just rubs it up like that. And it gives it a certain sense of satisfaction and pleasure and then it carries on on its, on its daily routine. That's pretty much all it does. Now this creature is sort of all kind of all black humanoid shape, but it wears this quite funky um, gold sequin jacket shrouded in that and big kind of flower, big kind of like uh, flannel kind of trousers that go out and come in at the knees and that kind of thing. So that's what the creature kind of looks like. Now, one day a crack appears in the environment and the crack kind of represents the idea of truth, like the grass growing through the cracks in the cement, something that you can't stop, something that is inevitable, that the truth will eventually reveal itself. So the creature goes on its routine, on its daily routine, and then comes across this crack. And when it reaches the crack, it kind of sends it off on a tangent, sends it off on this journey of discovery, whereby it discovers senses one by one. Now, the first sense it encounters is a nose or smell. And it finds this nose, and it just finds the nose, and it's figuring out where to, like, you know, where does the nose actually go until eventually it finds the right place, and then it can smell and smell comes into the creature's environment. It can smell its environment. But not only can it smell its environment, it can smell the flowers. So when it grabs the flowers like it normally does and crushes them up, it goes, oh, they smell good too. So I'll grab some more and I'll crush a few more and I'll smell them and stuff like that. Um, and then as it has the nose, the nose leads it on to discover a set of ears. And then the creature goes through the same process, trying to find out where do these ears live and stuff like that until eventually oh, it can hear and sound becomes part of its environment. But not only do the flowers um, smell good, but they sound good too. So it grabs a few more and smells or crushes them up, smelling them and hearing them and it keeps going, keeps going. And with the nose and the ear, the creature is then able to discover a mouth. And again, goes through this process of like, where does this mouth live? And, like, and it can start to vocalize. But not only can the creature, not only does the creature, not only does the, the flowers do they now start to smell good and sound good, but they taste good. So the creature starts stuffing them in his mouth or its mouth. And it goes through the whole process of grabbing the flowers and smelling them and hearing them and eating them, smelling them and hearing them and eating them. So there's just kind of more and more, as this discovers these senses, there's just more and more destruction. It just kind of fuels its appetite for this kind of like hapless destruction of these flowers. Until finally, the creature finds a set of eyes. And once it finds out where the eyes belong, all of a sudden, the whole environment, the whole cave is revealed to the creature. It can see its entire environment. And as it's looking around, it's like, oh, it catches sight of the flowers. And the flowers are so beautiful and colorful and pretty. And it's, the creature is completely awestruck, standing there frozen, amazed at the beauty of these flowers. But then that whole feeling is quickly tainted as it looks down and sees all the destruction at its feet all around it. How did this happen? And as he's looking around, as it's looking around, the creature catches itself in the mirror, in the den of mirrors reflected in those mirrors. And suddenly realizes that it is to blame for this destruction. 
it is responsible for this carnage. Because the mirrors are this kind of metaphor whereby the creature has been hiding behind them, so the mirrors sort of reflect the truth. So it doesn't encounter the truth, but once the creature stands in front of the mirrors and sees its own reflection, the truth is revealed. And, it, and the creature must accept some responsibility here. At that moment, another crack appears in the, in the cave, in the environment. And a final flower starts to grow up through the crack. And automatically, almost instinctively, the creature reaches out for it and do what it normally does. And <sighs> but it recoils and thinks, maybe not. And this is the turning point. This is the moment of self-realization, enlightenment. This is, the, this is the message about accepting responsibility for the things you've done and then making the change to make an improvement, to change your ways for the better. The creature now realizes it wants to preserve this thing that it finds is most beautiful. And I've actually given it a lot of given it a lot of joy. But it wants to preserve it. And then at the same time, a light starts to appear at some distant point in the cave, and light begins to flood into the cave. And this light is the light of enlightenment, really. And the creature is drawn to it. It looks behind it where it used to be in this den of ignorance and turns and makes its way out towards the light, towards growth, towards being a, a different, different creature, a different outlook, you know. And that will conclude the show as the creature makes its way out of the cave and into enlightenment. So, um, <clears throat> uh, this show, um, this show will be a, a immersive, kind of semi-immersive and sensory experience for the audience as well. So the piece will take place in alternative spaces where the audience, they have to go down underground to some degree, you know, downstairs or down an elevator into a basement below ground level. Uh, or into a recess kind of tucked away in a faraway end of a building or a venue, for example. So the idea is the audience get to experience, even though it's slight, they get to experience this journey of going into the darkness and then in the end coming out into the light, even coming up into the light as the creature did. And then there is, uh, we'll work with a set designer to create a sort of gradual uh, development and encroaching of the kind of cave-like environment, you know, wet moss, little bits of it appearing as the audience get closer and closer to the scene, um, so finally you're immersed in this kind of like world underground. Uh, and then during the show the audience kind of has, has this, goes on the same kind of sensory journey, so when the creature finds a nose we release a smell into the auditorium, when the creature puts on ears we use multi-directional sound to kind of orally stimulate the audience, maybe some vibrations as well. When the creature puts on some eyes, we use the light to kind of start to kind of like fill in the fill in the, um, the environment in the cave. So as the creature sees more, so does the audience. So they kind of have this sort of similar journey and going along in tandem, uh, which I think would be really exciting. <laughs> uh, so why do I want to make this piece? I want to make this piece because I've been sitting on this idea for so long. I came up with the, the image, the, the, I had this image for the, for the character over 10 years ago when I was working in the Arches in Glasgow. Um, and now seems like a really good time. It's it's an awesome opportunity to work. Com you know, this is a piece which is completely out of the context of my normal work working world, which is dance. Um, and I think it's really it'd be really exciting and really useful to work with a company like Magnetic North and the collaborators that I want to bring in bring on board and help me sort of make this transition into a completely different context to develop some new skills, make new partnerships, and have myself and my own and my work seen in a completely different light as a sort of evolution into a sort of new new area. Um, so that's why I really want to go for this fund and work with Magnetic work with Magnetic North and be based in Summer Hall. Um, and um, yeah, and, and, and there's a chance to sort of build and develop these these kind of relationships and stuff. So we're planning planning to work with Jonathan Webb, who is the sound designer, and then also bring on board a a dramaturg and a set and costume designer and those two people if we are successful with the fund those two people we would find through a call out uh, or through professional networks um, and in terms of the future uh, of this piece I see the work being performed in, you know, for fringe festivals site-specific festivals and events out in the city multidisciplinary cross out from kind of kind of pieces I'm really interested in that the piece takes audiences out so out with regular theatres and theatre spaces 
and it can act as a bridge perhaps in sort of localized areas and communities between a venue or alternative space and the community around it. Um, and I really think that's in the long term that's going to be the real the real the real strength of this piece, the way that it can sort of happen in different spaces, surprising places and 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 get the public and the local people in that area to kind of engage with spaces like differently, you know to and and almost m more accessible because bringing it trying to bring it closer to the public rather than having to go to you know fancy theaters and things like that, which sometimes people are are a little bit wary of, you know. Um, and also, I believe the work has quite a strong uh, environmental message uh, about climate change and taking responsibility and making positive changes. Um, so I think it could sit well for a school audience as an educational thing. There'll be nothing in the work that will be unsuitable for young people. And the piece will last approximately about, I think about 45 minutes when it's finally completed. Um, this bid is about taking the piece up to a kind of production where we can bring on, bring on board uh, other partners and showcase a kind of work in progress and get ideas and you know materials and ways of working and directions that we want to take it in so um, that's why we want to go for it um, so that's it that's the pitch that's the K really hope you support it and uh, that's it for me stay safe